But one final Rosicrucian emblem in the Library of Congress is worth noting. High up in the ceiling, in between two faunish looking figures with serpents for legs, is what appears to be a traditional crucifixion. But behind the Christ-like figure on the cross is a black, double-headed phoenix. The words in Latin that encircle the image come from Psalm 17.8, a psalm that is often employed in Rosicrucian writings. It reads, Under the shadow of thy wings, protect us. The question is, whose wings are providing the protection? Beginning in the 1980s, a belief has slowly taken over the world. That neoliberal globalization with its built-in self-regulating mechanisms would finally do away with old institutions like the state and the military and would usher the planet into an era of relative peace and prosperity. Free trade will bring on a great depression. 9-11 and the current economic crisis have shown that belief to be largely a myth. Many signs were already there. Markets have always relied on state power and military might. America's transformation from republic to economic superpower following World War II was accompanied by the creation of a global network of military bases unlike any other in history. According to the Pentagon's base structure report, today these amount to 716 in 38 countries. More than 250,000 soldiers are stationed on these bases. In addition to this, the US has a military presence in 110 countries around the world. A year after his election, Barack Obama approved the new administration's first military budget. This amounts to $680 billion, 30 billion more than Bush's last defense budget, and almost equaling the $787 billion set aside by the new administration for the economic crisis stimulus package. Why, despite the crisis, does the military budget keep growing? Are crises and military expansion related in some way? When we have different presentations or uh, sometimes bands that come or even when we have talent night, if we have people that want to show off their talent, we have a stage. Um, We've done all sorts of things here from a Halloween party, uh, there's Christmas parties, there's other events that happen here at this center as well. Yeah, they had they have salsa classes, so I've never taken a salsa class. In the early 21st century, military bases, the network of military bases all around the world, forms the new empire that the United States is trying to build. When you look at the Pentagon's website and their public information, they acknowledge having somewhere over 700 military bases scattered among about 130 countries. That's astonishing. That's astonishing. Most Americans have no idea. There are more than a quarter of a million, more than 250,000 U.S. troops stationed on these bases all around the world. It's not illegal to take, but i got to respect the manager's point of view. Those are the movies that we have, and the movies are free. Bringing in the morning couch in a quiet resort on Ecuador's Pacific coast, a scene common in any Latin American port town. But above the fishermen's heads, Look closer. A U.S. military spy plane is on a mission to catch cocaine-loaded speedboats on this drug trade route. Launched from Manta, the only U.S. military base in South America, U.S. Commander Robert Leonard says counter-narcotics is the only mission for the aircraft. Potentially uh, fishing boats that are moving illicit, tar illicit cargo or the, the, the new threat, which is the semi-submersible. And they are assets that are on the surface of the ocean. That radar is looking on the surface of the ocean. It can't penetrate uh, the jungle. But these operations are now shrouded in controversy. 
the attack by Colombian forces on a rebel camp in Ecuador has raised questions of whether these spy planes provided information for the attack, something the U.S. commander here denies. Here at Full Monte, that's just that has nothing to do with our mission, and we had nothing to do with uh, what happened then. In fact, uh, during that particular date, the AWACS, uh, which you see here behind us, were, were actually sitting here on the ramp. They weren't even flying on those days. The attack on the Colombian guerrilla camp provoked a regional crisis. Ecuador and Colombia broke diplomatic relations. Senior Ecuadorian officials resigned from their posts, and the American military operations are now in question. The surveillance these planes do are now a subject of investigation at the heart of the National Assembly in Ecuador. In addition to the investigation, Ecuador's lawmakers are proposing to ban all foreign military presence in the country. It's a direct swipe against the U.S. from a socialist government determined that the U.S. base should not be allowed to stay. I think it affects our national sovereignty. It's evident that the conduction of the operations are totally in the hands of the Americans. I would doubt that the United States would accept a Mexican or Canadian base in its territory. failed attempt to overthrow Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa has ignited new claims that the U.S. is still in the business of putting in and taking out Latin American presidents. From Venezuela to Haiti to Honduras, coups involving the United States might not seem like anything new to some people, but could the emergence of leftist governments actually challenge the dominance the U.S. has enjoyed in Latin America? Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa has returned home after that failed coup. Thousands of police took to the streets of Quito yesterday, fired up about a new law that they believed would jeopardize their benefits. Hundreds of military troops came to the rescue of President Correa in a standoff with police that lasted an hour. Several were injured and two died, but as the chaos and turmoil unfolded, the mainstream media barely touched the story. Tom Murphy is a blogger for the Huffington Post. He joins me now from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to talk more about this. So Tom, this incident has dramatically affected not just Ecuador, but the entire continent of South America, really. A group of South American presidents had an emergency meeting in Argentina and pledged their military support to President Correa. And all the State Department in Washington has said is that they're, quote unquote, monitoring the situation closely. Uh, what's your take? Why is the media and the United States at least outwardly ignoring this? For the past 50 years, Japan has relied on the U.S. military to maintain regional security. But growing protests over the American base on the island of Okinawa has tested this alliance. Now Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama's leadership is in question after reneging on a promise to remove the base. I wonder if you would address the withdrawal of the American military bases in Saudi Arabia and what the real story was there. It seems to me that when Osama bin Laden listed his demands, his number one demand was the departure of American bases from his homeland. Yes. Uh, was had, I think Israel was number four or something of his demands. And, and very soon after 9-11, the American bases left. Yes, very good, very good point. Um, it goes back to the, the geography. Um, the, I mean, all the Americans were up here in the east. But because of the way Saudi Arabia was it, it pulled together, it was possible for Osama bin Laden to say they are in the Holy Land. Sort of talk, I mean, obviously troublemaking, as if they were in Mecca and Medina. The Americans and the Saudis were very careful to keep on that side. Um, but um, this, to to, 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 to...
Secretary of Defense Robert Gates from the United States is visiting Latin America this week and actually sealed a deal on Monday with Brazil to uh, extend further and I guess you could say to consolidate the military cooperation between both Brazil and the United States. So even though there has been no declaration or statement made uh, officially by the Venezuelan government, there certainly is concern in the region, there's concern amongst the people of Venezuela and other nations in the region that this is yet another example of the U.S. disproportionately expanding their military presence in Latin America as happened last year with Colombia, with the establishment of an agreement with the Colombian government between Washington and Colombia that will permit basically a territorial usage of Colombia in addition to seven military bases for U.S. military purposes, and in fact, official documents from the U.S. Air Force talked about that agreement as uh, necessary in order for the United States to execute full-spectrum military operations in South America and to combat what the United States considers a constant threat from so-called anti-U.S. government.